Okay, so we're going to be talking about these piercing valves. And these piercing valves are to be used mostly with type 1 appliances. Type 1 appliances are appliances that have been charged at the factory with a refrigerant and have 5 pounds or less of it refrigerant inside. They usually have a process stub coming off of the compressor somewhere. And on this one, uh, there is no process stub. So we're going to have to get it from the high or the low side of the system. So we're going to be putting a tap -a line right here on this copper tube, which is a quarter inch and it's the discharge line uh, going to the condensing unit. So we're going to put one there. So there's different types. This one's an uh, odd version, but it, it actually works with a lot of different types of tubing sizes uh, for the larger tubing sizes. But the way it works is you would unscrew this fitting down at the bottom and then kind of squeeze it to get uh, the, the piece out. And when it comes out, then you can pull the center piece out and it'll slide, it'll slide over and then you can put the tubing in and then you tighten it up and then what happens is once you tighten it up you turn the knob down and you can see that little needle right down there pushing uh, downward and it would pierce into the copper tubing All right, once it pushes the needle into the copper tubing you need to back the copper tubing out to release the pressure and then the refrigerant could flow through the valve right here okay that's kind of a, a different one there's also this one if you're just going to be recovering refrigerant this is an imperial tool most of them are to be used with copper or aluminum tubing only so copper aluminum tubing this one's for copper only uh, this one has a needle right in here and you would just crimp that around the pipe and then it comes with a uh, once you crimp the the pierce once you pierce the copper tubing you would keep it locked in right there like that. And this would not be left in the system. Uh, I would tighten this down with this Velcro and then I would hook up my gauge and proceed with the recovery. But the first thing we should do after installing any type of piercing valve onto the pipe is leak test it with some soap bubbles. Now you gotta understand, once you put one of these piercing valves in, and here's a 3 16 size, this one here is a 3 8 size, this one here is a 3 8 and some of them even come with these collars that can adjust for 5 sixteenths and then this, this collar right in here is for a quarter inch. So this is the one that we're going to use for this one here and uh, sometimes for recovery you might need to access both the high and the low side of the system for getting the required vacuum rates um, but for this one here we're just going to use the quarter inch on the high side of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. Now there's supposed to be a gasket in the center right in here, a little neoprene, sometimes cardboard, could be plastic. If it's missing the gasket, you could wrap the pipe with a little bit of Teflon tape and then make sure you squeeze the piercing valve on tight or electrical tape if you didn't have the Teflon tape. There's also different types. This one, the cap is on the top and uh, it's a little odd, uh, but most of them come when you open it up. If it's a standard size like this one's 3 8 it'll come with an Allen key an Allen wrench, and then everything connected up, a cap. Uh, this one has a black, that one looks plastic gasket, uh, and then we have the three Allen screws, and then the set piercing screw in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this one apart using the Allen key here. And we're not going to remove the center screw, but I am going to back that out because I don't want that needle down. So we'll go ahead and we'll just pull all these Allen screws out. And once you get them loose, you kind of just keep loosening them like that. <clears throat> and then they come out like that. So here's the gasket right in there. And because it's a 3 8 size, we have to really make sure that it makes a good uh, connection between the two pieces of pipe. So really what we're going to be doing and I want to make sure that the needle is back so it doesn't depress it or pierce it while I'm connecting it up onto the pipe. So I'm going to back that needle out. Now if you continue to back it out, the entire needle will slip out and you don't want to lose that. So I'm going to back it back in about two or three, making sure not to cross thread it. And I just want to feel it to make sure that the, some people will put a little bit of oil to make the gasket a little spongy on that there to keep it from drying out. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on a key. Now you got to make sure that you're going to be able to access this uh, tap right here for the service port for the refrigerant. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up and I'll start one screw in and then I'll do them by hand and then just make sure to tighten it up 
all the way. Spin it in. Now, this one's good for quick, but when I'm going to tighten it up with tension, I'm going to put it on the shorter side of the bend for the Allen wrench. tight and we want to make sure it is really tight but you can over tighten it and snap the heads off these screws so we're just going to go till we feel that it is tense and then we got to keep going around and doing there's really no particular order some people um, but you got to keep going around to make sure once we tighten one another side could loosen up a little bit and we need to make sure that they keep going even all the way around. So that's about it. That's pretty tight. Alright. So now I'm going to go ahead and pierce it. We're going to need a set of gauges. Ronnie, why don't you grab us a set of gauges out of the tool room? Alright, so now to pierce it, what we're going to do is we're just going to take this set screw and I'm going to go ahead and pierce it this way first. I don't hear anything leaking out there. That's good. I'm going to put little bubbles on it at the top and the bottom because when I back it out, if it bubbles up, we got to take a look at that connection. So we're going to do a quick bubble leak test on either side and then I'm going to go ahead and screw on the gauge. And we'll see if this also needs to be recovered. If I crack this pierce and then it says zero on the gauge, we do not need to recover because there's no refrigerant in it. And I'm not sure what's wrong with this cooler, but back it out. And she does have refrigerant in it. So now to identify the refrigerant, I'm going to look at the name plate or the data plate. So the data plate will tell me what type of tank I need to get to recover it. So I'm looking for bubbles here. There's no bubbles around here. So we could go ahead and proceed with recovery. If there is a possibility where you cannot get this leak free, then it becomes unattainable to get into a vacuum. You do not need to get down to all the way uh, to four inches in mercury. Zero is good. Uh, because once you have a leak here, um, then you can have air get into the system and then get through the machine into your tank and then these are not to be left in the system So if I was just doing a repair here I would put a T and then a braced access fitting that's going to be permanently into the system But that's now not a tight one system because it's no longer sealed from the factory I've done something to adjust that now It's a tight two system and if it's using any other refrigerant than R22 which this one's R134A I would have to follow those recovery requirements for the other refrigerant, and most of them being five pounds or less of refrigerant are gonna fall under the 200 pound rule. So if I'm using a recovery machine before 1994, 1993, I wanna get down to four inches of mercury, vacuum, uh, and then if I'm using a recovery machine, most of them are now after 1993, 10 inches of mercury vacuum before I can open the service for repair. And again, there's some of these stubs that are steel. You cannot use these piercing valves with steel. They're only to be used with copper or aluminum tubing and then they should be leak tested with the soap bubble solution to pinpoint a leak if there is one before proceeding with recovery. So hopefully that helps you. Thank you.